This evening and tomorrow, the 2016 Boston Book Festival will once again prove itself New England's largest annual literary event. Featuring roughly 200 world-class presenters and dozens of sessions for kids and adults, the BBF also boasts a bustling street fair, workshops for aspiring authors, an outdoor stage, and much more. Here now with all the fine print in our events is our friend Nora Peel, the festival's director of communications and development. Good to see you again. Hi, good to see you. Oh, this is such a, a big undertaking and you have <laughs> so many more presenters this year. They are, yeah. are you getting the response from the press to rally the troops to come to this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it really seems like no matter how much programming we put on every year, people flock to it and fill every session. <laughs> so everybody's excited for this kind oh, of programming. Oh, there's, there's, there's so many great um, presenters and keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was just going to mention Sebastian Smee, yeah. who's an, uh, the art critic. Uh, his stuff is so limpid and stuff. Uh, the, uh, who are the who would you say? Uh, Susan Faludi. I didn't yeah. know she lived in Cambridge. You want to talk about her? Yeah. So she's got a really really fascinating memoir. She's our memoir keynote this year. She's going to be in conversation with Christopher Leiden about that. So that should be a she really a fascinating transgender father. <laughs> yeah. Her, she was estranged from her father for many years, and then learned that he was going through a gender transition and it really inspired her to look into sort of family and cultural history in a really interesting uh, way. Um, there is there anything first of all before I forget anything new about the festival about I know you had over the years with things changing at the library you had different spaces available, right? Yeah, so we are now fully back in the beautifully restored BPL on in the new wing and the old wing. It's going to be fantastic to really get people in there and see what they've done with their space. So we're excited about that. Um, and we're also in a lot of our same back bay venues. So, um, you know, we've really expanded our footprint quite a bit and we're continuing to occupy that space. We also, we've had with the uh, French Cultural Center, a really great partnership for the last couple of years. And this year we're welcoming the Goethe Institute up oh, on wonderful. Beacon Street as well. Oh, wonderful, the German as, as well, well as the French. Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. Uh, <coughs> no wonder you got like 25, uh, in, you're nearly at 200. I saw that there's a lot of buzz around your one city, one story thing. Yeah. You have a science fiction story, the fairy handbag. Yes, yeah. I, that seems so intriguing. It, it came out a, a while ago, the, the short story, yep. right, in a collection. Yeah. You want to so tell us about The it? author is Kelly Link. She's from Northampton, um, and she's just, she's great. She's, um, she's written for teens and for adults, and so this year we wanted to choose a story that was a little bit of a genre choice. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of a fantasy story. I'll also about family history, um, and then also something that would appeal to uh, a younger audience. It's fantasy, right? Yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. Uh, a mysterious handbag. Yes, that, that, yeah, yes. that belongs to the uh, narrator's grandmother. Yes, and mysterious things happen. Yes. But, but have have you gotten a good response from schools and stuff to discuss this, or are you going to have a? Uh, Q and A with the author there. Yeah, so so yeah, Kelly Link will be in attendance, and we're really hoping that a lot of high school students in particular participate in discussions and also our writing contest that we have in conjunction with the program, and then show up on the day of to meet Kelly. Um, just today, we got a request from uh, Boston Latin Academy for some copies of the story, so they're clearly planning on continuing the uh, conversation even beyond the festival. And you do have it in other languages, right? In yep. Spanish. Yeah, we print it in Spanish and then downloadable in Portuguese, Russian, French. Mandarin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she never expected. Now, Frank Gehry, who's the architect, yeah, yeah that is another great get, you right? Yeah, really exciting. Um, we've got Paul Goldberger, who um, writes about architecture, um, going to be interviewing Frank. He just wrote a really definitive biography of Frank Gehry. Um, so that should be a really, really interesting conversation. So, um, uh, as usual, people should probably go to your website and try and plan out their schedule, right? Because you, how, how many minutes before uh, uh, discussion or presentation do you think somebody should get to the venue? Well, we usually open up the doors about half an hour before each given session just to try to get people in the doors and out of lines oh. outside. Um, this year, we have a great new scheduling <coughs> tool on our website so people can actually, um, either on their mobile device or on their laptop, plan out their schedule, um, their very individualized schedule, um, and bring it with them on the day of the festival, which is a lot of fun. Um, let's, and we should at least mention your. Uh, book fair, you know, the tents yeah. in um, 
in Copley Square. Do you, what do you want to say about that if somebody's never been there? there? There's book vendors, right? But there's all kinds of other ancillary things there as well. Yep, yes, we have about 75 oh um, exhibitors goodness. and it, it really runs the gamut from MFA programs to literary magazines to, as you mentioned, booksellers and, and small pu small publishers. Right, and you have music uh, components as yeah, well. Yeah, Berkeley College of Music, <laughs> um, they, um, they program our stage outside, so we really have a great showcase of young, exciting musicians out there as well. So you, it's, it's all happening there in uh, the Boston, if it wants to return its its nickname of the Athens of America this is a must uh, do but nobody needs to be forced to go to the book festival because it's so great I mean uh, yeah, and, and, and it's free, uh, yeah, it's free. <laughs> yeah. everything's free what else do you need to know so uh, you suggest they go to the website and we got to yeah. like your new logo yeah here. thank you <laughs> yeah so it's bostonbookfest.org and Fest, there you not can, festival yes. I mean for the logo yep all right. Well, thank you once again yeah. for telling us everything and, and prepping us for, for this event this yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, thanks for having me in. All right. That's it for this edition of Neighborhood Network News. Chris Levin and the rest of the gang will be back here on Monday night. We hope you'll join us then.